Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, we're going to try to land on the moon again and also put a Kerbal into our Dionysus spacecraft and get that Kerbal to orbit and back. However, I brought in the previous Dionysus that we had used and attached a new rocket to it. And it says edited 0%. Basically, it's not giving me credit for the pod at all. Uh, so I'm a little bit worried about that. I'm not entirely sure we're use reusing these pods properly. But anyway, we'll save these edits, and this will be the second one, actually. This is not the one we're using for the Kerbal. The one we're using for the Kerbal was the first pod that we had launched. I did put the ablator back on. I don't know what the charred ablator situation is. Um, we'll see that when we get out onto the pad, whether it is still charred ablator uh, to worry about. But, yeah. I think all of that may or may not be done before Earth-Mars window. As far as that window is concerned, we've got two rockets to go. All right, rolling out the Luni 2 which is slightly modified from the previous Luni 2 And we will attempt to land on the moon. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle, oh well, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. We have lost one of the boosters. Uh oh. It is adjusting. I'll kick it off. A little bit tight there. Okay. We may have um, bombed the pad. I think one thing I do have on is indestructible facilities. Okay, we're past the speed of sound. A little bit too steep, obviously, after that little fiasco. I should have just rearranged staging to release it. Um, we've lost another engine. This is one of the core engines. Well, we're not too steep now. <laughs> um, but the only reason we had three of the booster thingamajigs in the first place was that we needed to meet the minimum pad limit, so we might be alright. Okay, separation. Oh, we've got reduced performance on one of them. Bad specific impulse. Okay, separation and ignition. And fairings. I think we'll still be fine. This is a very OP rocket for this payload anyway. I'm not too sure about the logic behind the minimum pad limits. I mean, after all, they do launch Falcon 9s off of pad 39A and that's a lot smaller than it was designed for. Um, Even as it is, you know, with the maximum limits, we'd be forced to make new pads because when we start out, we don't have enough money for the big pads. So, having a minimum limit doesn't force us to make new pa uh, new launch complexes and everything like that. The money does. Okay, separation and ignition. This time, just two of these. Um, they're larches now. That was one change I made. Uh, because they're larches with higher thrusts, we didn't need three of them. We're just shy of orbit, it looks like. Well, with all the troubles we've had. Well, we can't make a direct transfer either. That's troublesome. I was a bit too forceful correcting the inclination. I probably should have left off of that and we'd have enough. I need some extra time to apolapse this here for the RCS to maybe help us complete our orbit. Oh no, one of the engines. Uh, reduced thrust, not reduced ISP though. Gosh, everything's happening with this one. Did we miss the aliens that said we must not land on the moon? 
do not attempt a landing there or something. Okay, well, RCS, maybe? Moon's over there, we definitely need to make orbit, we're over here. Let's just say we do sort of a long transfer. And by long, I mean like 13 days. I guess that's probably the best thing to do at this point. Okay, we'll take that sort of thing. Separation. We'll be burning under the auspices of Ascension. And we should do that now. Okay, go. Oh no! Even this engine failed to ignite. Uh, okay, I'm regretting switching to the larches now. Okay, well, this is just gonna have to make orbit then. Well, so much for landing on the moon. It, it really got me this time. Four different engine issues. <laughs> Two on the first stage, one with the new larches on the third stage, and then one on the transfer stage. And only the last one really could have, I mean, and did doom it. I'm just boosting it higher up so that it could help with communications or something. Okay, let's go to Laplapsis and sort of circularize it as a commsat. Okay, we're just going to leave it there. In this case, to be sun up. Well, that was a disappointment, but back to Space Center. We'll build another one. Hopefully, we'll have nice data units in the larches at least. Okay, I've rolled out the Dionysus 1, and now it's the moment of truth. Oh, shoot, I forgot about the mission training. Okay, uh, we need to train her for the mission, right? Not just the proficiency. Okay, start training. Oh my god, it's gonna take for how long? January 3rd. Okay, well, alright, she's training for the Mercury mission. And hopefully then she'll be okay with this pod. Alright. Uh, Mars, I guess. Okay, we have a Duna 1 on the pad. We're ahead of the window, and this is one of the peculiarities with me using Transfer Window Planner. I don't uh, plot separate ones, and I'll rely on, I generally rely on the second one to be at the window, not the first one. Uh, so the first one is more winging it, but um, uh, we'll uh, we'll still try and go for the ejection longitude of ascending node. It wants basically 80 degrees. Okay, let's see if we launch like this, what happens. Uh, or whether I have to be on the other side, I forget. Alright, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. Unfortunately, we have bad specific impulse on an engine. I'm just gonna shut it off. We've been having a lot of trouble with the Vikings suddenly. Okay, separation and ignition. Fairings. I don't think we have enough for orbit though. We didn't make these larches that- oh no, we did make them larches. Good thing or bad thing, I have no idea. Well, we might have enough for delta, uh, enough delta V for orbit, because they are larches, if they remain good larches. Well, not quite, not quite enough for orbit. Then that will be a problem. Well, we'll let the RCS do what it can do, but it can't do that much.
Yeah, the Viking engine failure on the first stage did hurt us a little bit too much. This is not the boosterized version of the Denib rocket. This is just the straight stick version, and that can barely lift the three tons to orbit. And this is actually probably 3.1 tons. Well, apparently we are out of something or another. Yeah, we're out of the helium. All right, uh, well, separation. Oh, I didn't mean to burn immediately. Oh well. <laughs> and then we lost comms. Well, I mean, we can't do a whole lot else, so we'll just leave it burning. Well, now does the other 2,372 give us a chance to fix this? This is highly radial right now. It's like that. So 90 degrees off from where we want to be. Mars is actually pretty far off. I'm used to a smaller phase angle. I'm so surprised we haven't picked up some comms. Maybe something else is wrong with this. It's a much more narrow angle than I'm used to seeing from these. I thought this is the same dish. Why is it so narrow? And even in its narrow scope, I would expect it to pick this up soon. But this is way narrow a cone compared to what I'm used to, so that's rough. Okay, well now we've picked something up, but geez. I mean, probably it's not going to work anyway. Yeah, right now this could only get to Venus. It's not particularly good commsat either, given the cone angle. Um, I'm going to just dispose of it. Using all the RCS instead of just the ones at the bottom. Okay, this should meet with a fiery demise. Okay, we'll, we'll take a look at our next one up to see what we can do. What was up with this thing? We got 43 decibel thingamajigs. Maybe tech level 3 is the problem. But then we need that. We need S-band. Can you do S-band? Oh, you can do S-band too. Alright, fine. We'll use the Omni antenna. Safer. Lighter, probably. Well, this says it doesn't have enough juice to Mars. By any chance. Nope, the commutron does not... does not want to communicate. Um, so yeah, we can't use this one. For Mars. But for the sake of our launch situation, I'm gonna add the antenna back in here and make it UHF on um, tech level 2. Or maybe even tech level 1. So that I can communicate to the ground stations without having the antenna angle situation. So yeah, we're putting that antenna back in there as a UHF antenna, and then we'll have this as the S-band for long-range stuff. Hopefully it'll work out for us, but a little bit more dubious now. Well, it doesn't take too long to edit, but the rollout will exceed the window time. Oh, and reconditioning takes three days. Can't they recondition it while we're rolling out? out? I mean, it's not at the pad yet. Okay, I'm just going with the longitude of ascending node that has down there, trying to match it with that and seeing if that works out for us. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. 
Well, we have four engines for now. We're through the clouds and past the speed of sound. Oh, we've got, uh, well, reduced thrust on an engine, but not reduced specific impulse, so we'll keep it running. Man, though, today's been horrible with the engines. Okay, and staging. And staging. Well, should have enough for orbit this time, but we'll see. Okay, we are at least in a proper orbit this time. Well, it looks good. The uh, ascending node there is where I would want it to be. This is an exceptionally good transfer to Mars anyway. Yeah, there's a very nice transfer window to Mars. Well, that's crashing into it. The specific approach we'll have to see, but that's certainly good enough for now. Unfortunately, our burn point is in the middle of nowhere. And I don't know if waiting a few orbits is even going to make a difference, but I don't see any choice in this case. There's a uh, loony. That loony that we just launched and couldn't get to the moon is actually trying to help. Well, we have comms. Possibly that then of G. What's going on here? Yeah, that then of G is helping. We only need about maybe 50 seconds before the node and then the rest of it after, but it's a lot of rest of it. Okay, go. This stage we can burn out. But we'll need DNFG to hang on to comms here for us. Right now, it seems to be sometimes Looney 2, sometimes the DNFG. And to shut off the next stage, we're going to need the NG to be a little bit more consistent. And we've lost comms. Oh, we got again. Okay, it's just the NG, which is like this, off and on. Okay, well, I guess that's what we're going to deal with. Oh no, we've lost it completely. Well, shucks. Well, if we pick something up, we probably have some Delta V to counteract the overburn, but we'd have to pick something up soon. Okay, okay. Uh, we have picked up... what the heck have we picked up? Um, it says Amalek. Okay, I guess I can't really see the line. Really, really, really faint. Okay, so we have Amalek. Let's try and undo the 230 meters per second that we've done extra here. Okay. Next time, though, we're going to have to figure out some commsats, I guess. We'll do a mid-course correction to fix the rest of that, so... Yeah, okay, well, once we point at the sun, this is going to be too sensitive anyway. Okay, spinning for sunlight, and I'll plot a mid-course adjustment for that. And at least we've got one Mars flyby mission on its way. Okay, that should be good. 229 days to arrival. And this is all happy. Its science is waiting. And hopefully it'll be all right. So, with this all ready to go, we'll catch up with it in 94 days, back to Space Center. Uh, Viola still has a bit until she's completed the mission training, but 
I think I'll just time warp to that. I want to see how that goes. I'm curious too. Um, now, when we get to Mars, we're going to be collecting a lot of science. So I think we need the R&D upgrade. We've got all the scientists that we can have right now. Well, we, we don't have the huge queue that we used to have, though. And it's got to take a while for the Mars mission to get there. We only have 160 there. Maybe I'll wait on that. Okay, now can we put Viola in here? Okay, Viola is happy in there. We'll put a shoot on just in case. Um, we'll wait until... We'll actually wait until morning. Okay, Viola Zabo. Let's see. No substantial chart ablator. There is a little bit, though. And there's a little bit less ablator than I was expecting. I had topped it off in the VAB, but I used the same heat shield. So I don't know if that's legal or not. I could have pulled off the heat shield and put a new one on, but I just topped off the ablator. We'll see. Uh, it's a little bit risky. Okay. Um, otherwise, everything seems to be fine. Uh, we'll try and remember the G-Force mitigation methods. Uh, throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. Hopefully we've gotten through all the engine failures already today. Maybe. Okay, not pitch zero. <laughs> That was probably the, from the last time this pod launched. Oh, we still had those Separatrons on the wrong stage there. Whoops. Well, we'll limit it to 6 Gs. Okay, those off. Staging. Oh, we have the pods RCS still active. Shoot. Let's... I guess that's all right, though. It's got a lot. We reused the pod, right? So its stuff is still active. I hope the chute is still okay. Okay, we definitely don't need to go up more. Um, let's turn the RCS off, actually. Okay, lighting the Gamma 2s and shutting off the core engine there. And we're also going to dump the fuel. that the core engine uses. It's not really good enough. Well, I mean, our service module will be able to bring us to orbit, but I've got to work on that balance a bit. But this stage remaining suborbital is a good thing. Okay, separation. I think we'll wait a little bit longer before using that. Okay, now we'll make orbit. Okay, it reads us as in orbit. I'll get to a one and a half hour orbit. Okay. And we will wait. Hopefully Viola will be alright in all respects. We've got um, one day worth of ox- uh, well, I don't know actually what is increasing the water but, but anyway, we have two days, basically, of everything. Um, crew report, flight control experiment. Flight control experiment needs three hours, so we'll wait through that. Okay, so now it should be charging a little bit more consistently. Okay, flight control experiments are done, so we'll just try and bring her back now. The first orbital flight crude is obviously satisfied. And we'll go around and sort of plop her in the Pacific close to South America. The orbit burn. Okay, 70 kilometers should do. Okay, arming the parachute. Separating the service module. Might be a little bit dark by the time we get back. And um, I don't know where we're going to end up. Somewhere close to South America. Maybe on South America. We are in the atmosphere. 
Uh, got some extra crew report in the atmosphere. Char to Blader is building. Veal apparently did not eat on this trip. Okay, finally flame effects are actually happening. We charred quite a lot of ablator without them. By the way, so far, max G's was 5.8 on launch. Well, she's had more crew reports to deliver. We apparently don't have a plasma blackout. I forget if I turned that on. I thought I did, but we sure have comms right now. But it's straight through Kuru, so... We're, uh, we're actually pretty close to Kuru, but we're on the land side. It's calming down, and the peak was 7.7 .7 there. Okay, parachute pre-deployment. Okay, well, it is happy. First overall flight crude is done, and recover vessel. Don't know if there's any benefit to recovering to VAB, but maybe reduced cost at least, I don't know. But didn't seem like reduced processing time. It doesn't have to be a rendezvous with a crewed vessel. So we can launch something else. The tough one's got to be EVA because we can't EVA out of the Mark 1 pod. And we'll need to use that cockpit, I think. Anyway, we'll pick this up. But yes, having managed the crew orbit finally, uh, though not the lunar landing with the probe, unfortunately, at least we got a Mars flyby mission on its way. With that, with the mixed results and all sorts of engine issues, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.